Hello everyone, really excited to be here. My name is Faye Ann Lee. I'm a technical marketing engineer and I'm accompanied by my teammate, Eric Eddy. Eric, do you wanna come up here? So my name is Eric Eddy, I'm a principal TME. I work with Faye. We are here to talk about Cisco Secure Access, brand new product. So go ahead and take it away, Faye. Okay, yeah, so we're both super excited to share with you uh, some new innovations that we have on a solution that we just launched today, which is called Cisco Secure Access. And so the agenda that I'm going to go through today is I'm going to give you a brief introduction of what secure, Cisco Secure Access is. And then I'm going to start talking about how we're using the solution to reimagine, to deliver our, a, an innovative user experience using the these innovations that I'm about to share with you. Then I'm going to dive deep into the architecture and then we'll go into some demos. Okay, so introducing Cisco Secure Access. This is Cisco's new unified SSE solution. All right, so at its core, it has the core components of SS the Security Services Edge, SSE, right? First, we start off with the Security Web Gateway, right? Which provides deep inspection and control of web-based traffic. Then we've got our Cloud Access Security Broker, CASB Functions, right? That to help you detect malware, alert risky apps, um, and protect data at rest or in motion and our firewall as a service capabilities. We all know what a firewall is. Um, it also supports uh, IPS inspection as well. And then zero trust network access, which is gonna be the main focus of what I'm gonna be fo focusing on today in this particular solution, right? Zero trust network access is all about being able to give leaves to privilege access to a particular resource thus limiting any kind of lateral movement to protect from vulnerabilities and threats. Before I dive into that, I also want to go ahead and say that remember, I mentioned that Secure Access is our unified solution. So as the solution itself also contains all of these different capabilities as well, DNS monitoring, multi-mode DLP, Talos Intelligent, Threat Intelligence from our Talos products. So all of these capabilities, I'm not gonna be going into them today, but I just wanna highlight that they're part of this solution. This is a single, you get all these capabilities in a single subscription, all the managed and configured and monitored from a single dashboard, okay? And these, all of these capabilities together provide deep visibility and threat intelligence to block more threats and remediate faster. Okay, so what are we using this solution for? Well, the outcome is, our desired outcome is to provide access, seamless secured access to users anywhere, to applications anywhere as well. So anywhere to anywhere access, securely, securely and seamlessly. And at its core, as I mentioned before, SSC, one of the key core components of SSC is that zero trust network access. But I want to highlight something, right? And even in the industry today, we have a lot of, there's a lot of buzz on providing zero trust network access using a VPN-less solution. Now, I want people to think, realize that, do they really want VPN-less? Because, I say that because with Z Z ZTNA, there's some architectural limitations. For example, not all applications can work with that. For example, you've got applications that have server-initiated connections, like monitoring and troubleshooting. You can't forget about that. Right? Also, multi channel applications like SAP and peer to, commu peer to communications like SIP and any kind of communication software. So these don't lend themselves really well to a ZTNA architecture. And so, what this ends up with is 
provides some confusion to the end user's experience. You know, when they're trying to access a particular application, how are they supposed to know, do I need to be on VPN or can I get there directly or what? It just leads to a very confusing and very frustrating experience. And we even have is this poll here that says that 49% of the people, you know, employees were frustrated with technology. I don't know, probably the 51 other percent of them were just so frustrated that they didn't even want to bother to answering the, the, the survey anyway. Okay, so what are we trying to do here with Cisco Secure Access? We want to use our solution to de deliver an easy and frictionless access, uh, experience for our end users, right? So they'll be able to automatically go to any application that they want, regardless of whether that's technically an on-prem application, a SaaS app, or, a basic, or an internet app. They don't even have to know any of that. All they need to do is connect to the network and get to work. And we'll do all the rest of the thinking and all the tech that's required to deliver this experience under the hood. And this is an architectural overview of our secure access solution and how we're going to help deliver this seamless experience. So here on the left, what we have are our users. On the right hand side here, these are the app applications, the resources that our users want to access. And in the middle is basically the secure access solutioning providing both the security, this is our cloud security infrastructure here, all of the components that I talked about here, DNS, Secure Web Gateway, DLP, CASB, all of Firewall, all of those functions that I mentioned before, that's all delivered as part of our, in our cloud as part of our service, as well as the fact that we provide options on how to go ahead and onboard our users to our service, as well as onboarding our applications to our service. And I'll start with how we onboard our users. So remote user, act, user connectivity here. All right, so I just talked about the different ways of being able to access applications as, as you know, uh, technologists that we are, right? You've got an option to go ahead and use a VPN connection. You've got an option to go ahead and use a ZTNA, that, that um, zero trust, that least privileged access to a particular application. And then we also can go, have a roaming module here, which can go ahead and redirect just internet-based traffic to web resources. So all of these capabilities here, the user is gonna, is gonna be uh, hidden from the user. And it's hidden from our user because all of these capabilities are rolled into our single client, the secure client. So, all of, right, so then the, that client is going to be built on different modules. It's going to have a VPN module. It's going to have a ZTNA module and also have a web roaming module as well. All of that's going to be in there so that under the covers, based on the type of traffic and the, the resource that the user is going to be accessing, we under the covers can go ahead and negotiate this, these different connect, connection methods on behalf of the user. So the user doesn't even have to understand any of this. Pretty cool. Now moving on to how we onboard our applications. Okay, so we have two options here. I'm gonna start here at the bottom here. This is our traditional IPsec backhaul connection. Right, so we've got our applications perhaps you know, deployed in an on-prem data, data center. Right, you can go ahead and establish a, a tunnel, a site-to-site -site connection with our cloud service, the Secure Access Cloud, and you'll be able to reach those applications. Now, up here is what another piece of what we're introducing here today is the application connector. And so what this is, is a little piece of software, VMware, you know, it could be a cloud instance, you can deploy it in the cloud, right? And it's a little piece of software, an agent, if you will, that you're gonna deploy closest to your applications. And what it's do going to do is spin up and automatically on its own, establish a tunnel connection, DTLS tunnel connection to our cloud. 
And now what it's going to do is all the, it's going to communicate to the cloud and all of the app, discover all of the applications that are behind it and act as a proxy resource. So all to, you know, for incoming traffic. And I'll go into more detail on how that works in just a minute. Okay, so diving into our, our architecture, I'm going to start first on our client side. All right, so this is our secure client. And as I mentioned before, it's got multiple modules, and this is the intelligence that it has to be able to kind of auto -dis detect what to do in what situation, right? So this gives the user a transparent experience. And we also have the ability to, you know, provide um, access that is either fine grained or coarse grained. So either, you know, broad access, or we can go ahead and restrict access to the specific user going to a specific resource, which is what the core principle of um, ZTNA is. And then these, the way we are establishing our secure connect, the, the secured connection to the cloud, we're going to automatically generate a certificate. So we've got a cer certificate to identify the users. And that certificate, that identity certificate that we generate, that'll be stored in TP TPM hardware. So that certificate is, that identity is protected, it's secured, and, and secured. Right, and the way we're going to do it, establish this connection to the cloud with this module, with our client, excuse me, is we're going to be using some new um, modern protocols that allow us to put, support both TCP and UDP based um, traffic. So we can support all ports and protocols and we, with these new modern t protocols that I'm about to talk to you about. And this enables us to be able to support both, you know, our own VPN capabilities as well as interop with third-party VPN uh, clients as well. And these new gem, these modern protocols that we're using are Mask and Quick. So let me go into a little bit more detail of, about Mask and Quick. Okay, so Quick is basically a UDP-based encrypted transport protocol. It was developed by Google, by people that worked from in Google. It was first introduced and used in Chrome as well as different app, web applications uh, in 2012. And it's used for HTTP3, in HTTP3, iCrowd private relay, SMB over quick, and DSR in various areas. And it's Basically, this particular protocol was designed to address all of the issues that we have <coughs> with TLS over TCP today. So it gives you those benefits. Now, we've got that quick transport protocol, and then now we also have MASK, which gives you the ability, coupled with MASK, gives you the ability to go ahead and encrypt do an efficient tunneling of this quick traffic inside HTTP v3. Okay, so the combination of these two will, is going to provide an efficient and a secure transport mechanism that allows for all ports and protocols, TCP, UDP, IP traffic for web, as well as non-web protocols, you're going to be able to send all that traffic through this particular tunnel connection without having to do the traditional VPN method, which is, uh, you know, with VPN, it's a very device encompassing um, method that also involves ch routing table changes. With these, you don't have to do that. So let me dive in a little bit more about the quick protocol itself. Okay, so. Quick natively, inherently, as part of you know what we're designing, right, is that it provides a faster connection establishment. All right, it allows you to change IP addresses without renegotiating. Right, so this is very, very like I said, it was based on UDP. This is tr t totally different than using T TLS, which is TCP based. Right, 
TCP, as we all know, is a connection-oriented protocol. UDP is not. So now, now that we can go ahead and use UDP, there are some benefits to that connection, a uh, connectionless protocol, right? Where now we can go ahead and we no longer need to wait for partially delivered packets because each of the packets are going to be individually encrypted with this quick protocol. There's no head of line blocking, so you can go ahead and do stream multiplexing and it can support multiple interfaces at the same time, so you've got multi-path capability there as well. Yes? How does this compare with DTLS? DTLS? Mm. That, can you, DTLS, that's a, T, that's a TCP base. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. No, DTLS is UDP, like. Sorry. Yeah, it's UDP based. So with, you still have your, your negotiation of TLS, right, with DTLS, which is a back and forth. With the, the mask and quick, it actually does the TLS negotiation at the first packet. So it's going to establish that connection that much quicker. And of course, as you roam around, the faster you resume, the faster you're getting back to your job. So it's, it's going to allow you to get, and it's, it's embedded right in mask and quick, that TLS 1.3. So it allows you to have that connection much quicker. It's still using the UDP, so you're getting, you know, not having to do the three-way handshake, but you're getting the, the benefit of this, these new mask and quick uh, technologies. So the performance is roughly the same, but the reconnect's a lot faster. Yes, it would be, yes. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. The same as, yeah, as DTLS. But like DTLS connections, like traditional remote access, is in a single place, right? You, you don't get the multiplexing, right? The multiplexing capabilities, really important as you have very d diverse networks, you have apps all over the place, very important to be able to have that multiplexing. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. All right, and so, and then talking about the mass protocol here, so I'm not gonna read all of this here, but one thing I want you to remember here with the mask, right? These two things are really important in that when we're trying to decide what to do, right, we are using Quisp, we're going to go use mask, and this is key. The flexibility to support per connection, per app, or per device tunnels. Remember, part of the uh, SSE, core components of SSE, is that zero trust capabilities. Now, with the flexibility of being able to support per connection, per app, or per device, now you're being able to kind of start providing that zero trust, that list, least privilege, least privilege access, okay. And then uh, moving on. And then of course, native OS support. And so what we have is, you know, these protocols, they're, you know, they're well-known protocols, they're modern protocols now, and now we have our vendors, major vendors today, OS vendors, actually support natively supporting these protocols within their um, operating systems. Okay, moving on to a little bit more about diving more into about our client and how it actually works. So if we look at this diagram right here, at the very bottom we can see here, you know, you've got VPN down here and now using our quick to, and uh, mass protocols, but also what we're doing now is with our client, we're now intercepting traffic at the socket level. So why is this important? Right? So now, now that we're intercepting traffic at the socket level, right now we have the ability to control DNS and the, any kind of application traffic before it gets down further in the stack to the, towards VPN. And then with this, we're not manipulating any routes. There's no route manipulation here. We're not trying to get the, uh, the, the, the goal is here is not to put the, with VPN, right? You get a connection to, you establish that tunnel connection. And ideally with the goal there is to put that user almost like they're actually on that internal network, right? We're not trying to do that here. We're just going to go ahead and intercept that traffic and we're going to proxy it to a, a proxy, right? And then we can go ahead and uh, we have the ability to capture the traffic by IP, 
by IP subnet, FQDN, and FQDN wildcard. So we can go ahead and match traffic based on all of those four things. So, right? And then now, because we're not doing, this is not a VPN connection, we're, do, we're rerouting all of the traffic and manipulating the routing table, this gives you the ability to have some tunneling capabilities and then so that we can operate with this ZTNA client has the ability to operate with Cisco VPN as well as third-party VPNs, right? So because there's no routing conflict between, I've, you've got one VPN client and it's routing the traffic this way and then the other VPN client wants to go ahead and take control of the same routing table. We won't have any of that mess anymore. We're just using the, the socket to intercept the traffic. So once we've got the tra this traffic and we've now gone ahead and intercepted that traffic, what we need to do is go ahead and the client needs to go ahead and enroll, in a, enroll with our service. And here's how that works. What this, and I'll have a demo of this later on so that you'll be able to see this. And what they, you know, with our client, they're going to go ahead and initially this is a one-time effort that the user has to do. Okay. And what they're doing is they're rolling it with our service. They just provide their email address. In the back end, we're going to do a lookup saying, okay, this email address, this is the user. They're associated with which particular org organization that has these particular our, our secure access org services. And then from that point and on in the back end, we're going to go ahead and if the, based on, on policy, if policy dictates, that that user, we need to do a second type of authentication to truly verify the user. We can go ahead and do that. We can do that with, you know, any kind of SAML 2.0 provider, um, Duo, Okta, any one of those providers, any, you know, the IDP of your choice. After authentication, we can go ahead and successfully enroll your device and then we'll, and Go ahead and generate using Acme. Going ahead and use it through Acme. Go ahead and generate and automatically generate a certificate for that client, and that becomes. And remember that gets that certificate is stored in TPM, so truly secure. And then some from that point on, anytime a user tries to access an uh, a ZTNA protected application. And the, a, a little micro tunnel is automatically established from that user to the application, specific application. So if the user is accessing three applications, now you've got from his client from his client machine three micro tunnels going to each one of those applications. And since those are little micro tunnel, like logically micro tunnel connections to the application itself, you've got high security and no threat of any kind of lateral movement at all. So you've got that single streamlined tunnel connection. All right. So that's how you go ahead and establish the, the connection, the client connection to our service. Now, what about the applications. Okay, so now with our applications, how do we get them connected to our service? As I mentioned before, we have uh, what we call our application connectors. And what these are doing, as I mentioned before, you go ahead and you would deploy these little agents closest to the resources, your application resources. So in this case here, we've got, I've got multiple locations a data center with applications, a cloud, and even a partner network. And we would deploy these app, uh, app connectors. And what they're going to do is automatically establish a secure tunnel to the app gateway. What does this give us? Okay, This gives us the ability to go ahead and support overlapping IPs. So what this is is doing a proxy connection, kind of like acting as a proxy connection with our, you know, with our app connectors. And so these connectors are aware of the apps that are behind it, and these app connectors, as a you know, we deploy the app connectors in groups, 
And basically what, the, what we'll tell the service is, hey, I'm the application gateway to these apps, these particular apps. So these three application connectors, this app group here, will be responsible for proxying connections to these apps, this one for these, this one for these, right? And since these are not, these are just proxied connections, we can go ahead and support overlapping IPs. We could have the same IP address space in each one of these locations. And then the, no, there's no, the, the, the operations are invisible. So there's no exposed IP address. I'll go over the details of how this works, but there's no over the internet DNS record queries. You're not exposing, you know, your uh, applica internal applications out at all to the internet. There's no breadcrumbs, there's no system leaks, there's just all very protected behind this app connector and then secured, the connection to our uh, service is secured through this automated tunnel. So looking at the end-to-end -end workflow here, all right, I'm gonna start here on the right-hand side. So here's my applications, and these are my app application connectors. The application connectors are gonna make that outbound tunnel connection to the application gateway. This is hosted within our, within our secure access cloud. And what we're doing in, in here on the application ga gateway is going ahead and doing a mapping, okay? So here's an application, app1.demo.com. It's behind this connector group, this app connector group called application connector group A and we assign it a CGNAT IP. This is, we automatically do this. This is gonna be unique IP addresses per uh, customer's organization, right? We're gonna assign this IP. So basically the communications inside here, as far as they're concerned, they're just, tr they're just routing uh, packets to a destination of 164.10.1. They're not completely unaware of the actual end application and what its IP address is. Okay. Now, on the left-hand side here, we've got our client established its tunnel connection. And now the user says, hey, I want to go to application1.demo.com in their browser, let's say. So they type that in. Our client goes in there. The ZTN client goes at the socket intercepts that traffic for application.demo.1, demo.com, excuse me, communicates to our proxy, our mask-based proxy. The proxy replies that, oh, this app one is mapped to this particular IP address. And so that connection from the client is now forwarded to this particular application connected group to ultimately reach the end application. Make sense? Good. All right, so with that, I'm gonna start up, show you the first demo that I have. Let me go here. All right, so what I'm going to do here in this demonstration here, I'm going to show you an end-to-end -end flow. So first of all, this is, um, I'm an admin administrator and I've got an application deployed in this case, it's deployed in AWS. And I would like to provide ZTNA type access to this application. So I've logged into my secure access dashboard how am I gonna go ahead and stitch this connection? So the first thing I'm gonna do is create an app connector group. I'll give it a name. Where is this connect app connector group gonna have the nearest location that it needs to connect, connect to, to reach our services? I can go ahead and based upon the, the desired throughput that I want, we have this little helper here to kind of guide you. Do I need one application? Now, let me rephrase. Most of our, app, we advise our, 
um, customers to go ahead and deploy these app connectors in pairs for redundancy purposes. But basically, through, based upon the throughput, when you're trying to go ahead and figure out how many app connectors do I need to deploy, you'll de that's determined by the throughput, that desired throughput that you want. So we have this little gauge here of help to help you. Do I need one, two, or three app connectors? And then go ahead and save that. So now I've gone ahead and created my connector group. We've automatically generated a provisioning key associated with that group. I'll get into why that's important in a second. But then also, now that I've created this app connector, I got to tell the system what are the apps that are behind this particular application connector, right? So that's what I'm doing here right now, right? I just went through there. I mapped my app that I had deployed in AWS to my new app connector group. Going back here, co copying that provisioning key, I go to my AWS instance. And here, what I've done is created a template to go ahead and deploy my app connectors. And I'm going to use that key, that provisioning key that was automatically generated, and associate that with this particular uh, EC2 instance. And that way, that's going to be used as an identifier to which application connector, you know, here's an application connector that's coming online. It just connected to SSE. What is this thing doing? Well, based on its provisioning key, the associate, this is associated to the particular app connector group that I created. And the applications that I can reach with that application connector group is that one particular application that I had mapped previously. So I go ahead and launch this instance. Now, if I go back to my dashboard in uh, Secure Access, I can see here I'm waiting for connectors, connector status. I'm waiting for my connectors. Right, I just deployed that EC2 instance. It needs to go ahead and initialize. Once it's initialized, right, it needs to be able to route out to the internet and reach our cloud, and it did just there. Sorry, that was really quick. I'll go back for just a second here. Okay, as you can see, the status connected. It connected from here. So now that we know our connector group is online and stuff, now I'm going to go ahead and transition to the client side. So here's our, any, our secure client that we have here. It's been deployed. It's already got, it's been pre-deployed. It's got its VPN profile. I'm purposely showing here that it's not connected to VPN at the moment. And we also have our ZTNA module as, as, as well. Since this is just deployed, it hasn't connected, it hasn't been initialized yet. So I need to go ahead and enroll. This is a one-time effort that the user needs to do. So I go ahead and enroll. I'm as a user, I'm going to go ahead and type in my email address. Connected to my org, my organization says I need to go ahead and do MFA with Duo. So I'll go ahead and do that extra level of security. Continuing enrollment. Remember, we're doing some device registration in the back end, generating that certificate for the client. And now I've my, I'm now connected. So you said that's a one time user. Is it like one time per boot? Is it one time per um, 
I mean, but if, the, if they get a certificate, does the certificate expire? When does it expire? That's those would be the kind of questions I would have about this one time enrollment. So good question. And you're right. The certificate does have to expire for, for security purposes. Yeah, right. Obviously. Right. So right now um, it's right now it will. We, it's a two week window. OK. OK. And then it'll automatically. But it doesn't age out on boot. And, uh, no, it doesn't age out. It's on not impact. Yeah, I, you already mentioned it. Pretty sure you mentioned that um, doesn't age out on an IP change or something. Right? It doesn't age okay. out, right? Cool. So now, now with that client the certificate there, right? So now what the user can do is that app that I deployed out in AWS was a Jira app, and now I'm able to hit that application. Additionally, to the, what I'm trying to prove here is now I've got that ZTNA specific connection. If I try to go to an application that's supposed to be um, only accessible through VPN, I'm not going to be able to hit that. All right. However, if I were to kick in the VPN connection, I would be able to, in theory, access both applications. And one application would be using that ZTNA approach. The other application is going to you have access through VP, your traditional VPN connection. And remember, we kind of need this ability to have support both in reality for all the type of applications. So with ZTNA, we've got the um, and mask and quick, right? I was I said that we could support both tunnel, you know, um, all ports and protocols. We we're able to tunnel those connections, but for ZTNA, you've got those server-initiated applications, those particular applications that don't lend itself well to the ZTNA, we have a fallback of VPN with our secure client. Question about that. The, the VPN that you're using, I'm assuming, is pretty much the old AnyConnect VPN. Yes. So it makes sense to do that now in my thinking because you've already got it. Why not? But does it make sense long term to simply do essentially something similar to IP re IP relay like iCloud relay within a tunnel in Quick? Hold that thought. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about mobile ZTNA, right? Mobile operating systems are pretty proliferated these days. So let's let's talk a bit about mobile ZTNA. So if you guys. Uh, looked at uh, the Apple conference. Besides the cool goggles, they did announce some enterprise features. Uh, so they have their private relay service and they're bringing it to the enterprise. So we've partnered with Apple to work with them and use the mask protocol. So this is another reason why we went with mask was because this is the way the industry is moving. The, the OSs, not only the mobile OSs, but the actual you know, desktop OSs are also embedding mask right into it. And eventually, you should be able to use an MDM to pre-provision that mask uh, proxy inside the OS. So it goes away from you know all these vendors creating these you know packet processing to be able to send the packets to the cloud, uh, and now it'll be embedded right in the OS. So when you have any problems, it's ultimately the OS that's having the problems, not uh, the software or the service that you're using to proxy things. So. The enterprise proxy is very similar, similar to that Apple private relay, except you're not using an Apple private relay service, you're using an enterprise uh, relay service. And I believe they're going to support uh, multiple as well. So you can even chain a couple of them in. So say you're a contractor for a couple organizations, you can, you can chain in a couple of these different enterprise relay services. So you can access apps from multiple different companies that are all using the same uh, service. So really cool there. So really great for users because it's really easy to set up. We do have a demo of that. It looks very similar to the client enrollment. The enrollment process is very similar. We wanted to make it very similar. It's all using certificates as well. So really easy to enroll. And then just like ZTNA on the computer, you just turn your device on, it connects automatically. You use your apps just like you would the user doesn't have to think about it, right? That's the beauty of ZTNA and why um, users love it and you know IT desks love it too because the user doesn't have to think about it. So that will cover eventually your tunneled connection as well as your service. 
Well, it's so it is a tunnel, just like we, we saw before. Um, but the only thing you run into issues is those apps that don't support uh, ZTNA type of architecture. Sorry, I, I misspoke. It provides the ability to transport an IP tunnel as well as. So like an IP based connection is yeah, what you're so, asking. So instead of having any connect here mm -hmm. and your ZTNA here, mm -hmm. Essentially, have your IP tunnel encompassed within the ZTNA and just use one solution. Yeah, that's what we're we're working towards to to centralize around that ZTNA and that that private relay service, enterprise relay service, to do all connections, make it really easy for users. Very cool. So here we have <clears throat> the Apple device. There we go. Cool. So we have your, your traditional Apple device here. We have a Tableau app, so we can support you know, web apps as well as a thick app, right? So this thick app, you're trying to connect your Tableau, get some you know, data reports, not possible yet because they haven't enrolled in ZTNA. So we'll, we'll zoom back out and then we have just this app now that will enroll you. And it's very similar to the desktop OS where you just hit the enroll button and then you put in your email, just like you do in most other SaaS apps, and it gets you to the single sign-on provider. We support Apple ID as well. So we're just gonna do that Apple ID, Face ID enrollment, and now we're onboarded. So the app um, is not necessary anymore, and the device will automatically connect to that ZTNA connection. Um, and now we can access our Tableau app and put in the URL again and actually access it now, which we couldn't before. And just like we were talking about the, the OS before, it's two weeks on the certificate. And the user with Apple, Apple said that we have to have the button be clicked by the user. So they'll have to say yes to kind of stay in the program. And it'll reissue that certificate to that device and allow them to ZTNA connect in. So then they're not going to. Oh, so they're not going to just so I know. So like when, you know. The point if that solution gets deployed, they're not going to like self research, right? Like they're going to have to go and actually physically click that. They'll get like an email notification. I think it's a notification in the OS, right? So we're actually configuring the OS itself. Uh -huh. So there's an OS notification. Uh, and the app itself right now is kind of like the phase one. So the second phase of this feature will be MDM configurable. Okay. So you won't even need an app like that to do it. So you can just roll it right out. That's what. I... Yeah. yeah. Why would you install an app for one time? Yeah, it's so, really rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't know if they're like, you know, like through like, okay, like Meraki dashboard or through onboarding, like especially like if some people have an MDM solution like healthcare, so I don't want to use this, or it gets busy, they don't click it. Can you just go in, set it to just kind of push to all devices and yeah, you know, that's for them. Something that's like what that. The, the second phase is really all about is so you could push the app now and just tell users click this, and then it's a simple, simple. To it, it seems simple, but you can click on a button, you know, that I can go like this doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. So because you didn't yeah. get yeah, so that's that's why the uh, MDM enrollment is 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 going to be critical for that second phase. So, but yeah, it's you know it's really all about providing that connectivity that everyone needs wherever they need it in the simplest way possible.